All right, the Reds are talking Reds on Monday morning after the Reds beat Burnley yesterday. Back within a point of Manchester City. And then this week we go to Munich. Good times. Uh, good, times. <laughs> good times. These are good times. We need yeah. to say that more. Yeah. These are fantastic times. Great times. I, I've never been to Munich. I can't wait to go to Munich. People have told me lots and lots of good things about Munich. It's a great stadium. It's a great club. It's a big club. It's a proper European tie. Really looking forward to it. I'm really made up with the Reds as well. I mean, you know, mad, mad conditions at Anfield yesterday. <laughs> And did it, did it come it. over on the telly? Did it come over on the telly how mad it was? Well, I, 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 was, I obviously went the match, yeah, but yeah. then I watched, I watched match of the day last night, and, and yeah, it did. Because there was a bit, even though it was the highlights, there was a bit where it didn't look, look like they'd cut a lot out. And it was like, fuck off, hailstone, <laughs> fuck off, rain, dead sunny. <laughs> and then it was like, whoa. And like, like Lalana got interviewed afterwards, and it was included on match of the day, and he was just sort of like, that, it was mad. Because they were like, what was, that, what was that like to play in that? And he was like, mad. Yeah. And it was like, thought it was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the, wind, the wind changed direction during, yeah. during the match as well. So there's one ball where like it got, gets blown out of play. And then there's another ball played the same way that blew back. Yeah, it literally blew, it rolled backwards. Yeah. And it was you could like, see Salah was looking at it like, come on. I mean, this is ridiculous. And it's dead mad as well because I, I, like I went home after that, watched the Arsenal game. And like on the Arsenal game, Martin Tyler referenced the weather about six times. And it's almost like it's not mad to reference the weather around yeah. football. Because it's dead influential on the fucking game. <laughs> For me, it's the big lost thing about football is the weather makes it genuinely does a thing. Yeah. Old match reports used to always tell you what it the weather is, yeah, was like yeah. that day. Uh, or honestly, they really did. You used to blustery day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And the reason why is because it does impact the game. It always has done, and it always will do. The home side started the better. Yeah. <laughs> All of that sort <laughs> of thing. And the sun beating dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wrote enough of those cliched match reports myself down the years, but yeah, but here it, we are. It used to be there all the time, and I think that that's you know to have responded to those conditions yesterday going one nil down it would have been easy for Liverpool to find mm. hiding places they don't and in talking about the good times I uh, Dan Kennett tweeted that it, this is Liverpool's best start um, over 30 games we should no longer say best start by the way it's 30 games yeah, now. it's nearly the end, it's nearly the end. Uh, but it's Liverpool's best first 30 games um, since 87-88 yeah. and 87-88 didn't have European football to contend with um, and they were boss and, the, it, and it, that could be the greatest ever Liverpool side and this is Liverpool are currently doing as well as that side and better than every other side better than 78-79 that's how good this team is yeah. and when you're saying it's the good times you know I think that the people have just got to really get on board with the fact that you're not going to watch a better Liverpool team than this this is basically almost as good as a footy team can be if they go through against Munich they can't really be that much better what could they have done what, progress in the League Cup progress in the FA Cup maybe but apart from that they can't be that much better it's almost impossible well, I, I didn't really polish my language when I put this tweet out there, but I am a little bit annoyed by the fact that I've basically got people telling me how I'm feeling about the Reds. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I've, I've got people telling me, ah, you're, you're gutted though, aren't you, because you've thrown the league away. No, I'm not. I think we can still win it. Ah, uh, but, you know, you've blown it again though, haven't you? I don't think we have, no. And I'm, I've just packed my bag to go to Munich and I'm made up. Well, like, got these people constantly telling me how I'm feeling about my own footy club. I'm feeling fine. I'm loving it. It's boss. Um, also boss on match of the day last night as well. Uh, Phil Neville was on there. Um, he does have a tendency, I think, to chat a little bit of wham, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, but on this one, um, it, it's, it's a nice thing, so we'll discuss it. He, says that he, says, <laughs> he said he thought Robertson's the best left-back in Europe. I think before he said that, I think it was either Shearer or, or the host who said... Or, or it might have been on the commentary, but one way or another, someone said he was the most improved, which I think is a, there's a really good shout for that. Yeah. I think there's a really good shout for saying he's the most improved. Best left back in Europe, I don't know. I don't watch loads and loads and loads of European football, but he is good. Um, he's I definitely think he's, good. But I think you've got to go, I mean, you've almost got to go through the other side. So at the minute, City haven't been able to get Mendy on the pitch. So, yeah. so it's not fair. It's not a fair comparison. But you can say that he's he, across the last two seasons he's been better than Mendy because turning up is a thing. He's played. He's played, and that's the thing. And he's been better than anyone else who City have dropped in. Also, City do expect different things from the fullbacks, so I think it is a little tougher at times for their fullbacks to shine. There's a lot of them tucking into midfield and being tidy, not that much of them sort of really getting round the back and, and influencing attacking play in quite the same way. So I think you can.
can say he's been better than better than Mendy. I think you can say he's been better than uh, Kolasinac, who's at Arsenal. He's been better than Luke Shaw, who's playing for United mm. at left back. He's been better than Alonso or Emerson at Chelsea, and he's been better than either of Spurs, as you know, Davis or Rose. So that's this country boxed. That's that's safe. So let's move on. And then you can look at listen. Marcelo has been an unbelievable footballer for Real Madrid. He's ran games from left back. He has been across the last ten years the best left back. But there's a thing here across the last ten years. You know, he's he's getting on now. Madrid themselves are in a bit of a funny place. So is he currently the best left back? Is he playing the best football of his career? No. So Robertson could have been better than him across the last 12 months. Then you move on to Barcelona. Alba, yep, could be the, the nearest thing he's got to competition there. Um, I'm going right the way through. There's the lad whose name suddenly escapes me, which is uh, Alexandro at Juventus. He's done really well. But, you know, has he been better than Robertson? That's touch and go. Um, so he's in, the, he's in year three. Yeah. And as soon as you're saying he's in year three, then, yeah, he could well be the best. You know, and that's 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 the form he's in. And, and that's but that's going to happen because we're one of the best teams yeah. in Europe. We've yeah, got yeah, the best yeah. centre-half in Europe, we may well have the best left back in Europe, we could have the best goalkeeper in Europe, we've got the best lads who plays off the right in Europe if Messi doesn't play there. I mean, Messi skews everything because yeah. he's the best human in Europe, um, so that's going to be an issue. But, you know, apart from that, we, we are one of the best teams in Europe. This is back to what you were saying, we're one of the best teams yeah. in Europe. Not like, oh, we're quite good or blah, 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 or it's on, a, it's, it's, it's on the old maths that we used to have, which did all that sort of stuff. No, we're literally one of the best teams yeah. in Europe. So you we've got the best players. You don't fluke this many results. You don't yeah. get this many results when you're good. And, and yeah, uh, you were today first. Phil Neville in not talking shite shocker. Uh, Still oh, dived in a Merseyside derby and got booked for it. Yeah which is dead funny after he had to go about that. Um, loads of other stuff, which we will be discussing on the free podcast today and the rest of the Anfield Rats content. There's loads and loads to come, all the usual stuff. Subscribe and have a go of it because it's a really good time to get involved because we're all enjoy enjoying doing what we're doing and we're about to go out to Munich as well, as I mentioned earlier. We'll be doing loads and loads of content out there as well, all over the social media, all over the website, all over the podcast, all over the video. So get onto all of those channels and, and lap it all up. There's something else we've got as well, which will come at the end of this. Uh, we went to um, a Reds Bet event, a Fans Bet event uh, at Cheltenham. Um, so at the end of this is me. I think I'm speaking to Tom Lee on this one, chatting about the Cheltenham Festival and some tips for you in there. So, you know, if you're, if you're interested in that sort of thing, that's going to come at the end of this. If that's your thing, get involved. Uh, there's loads of other stuff here. It feels like we could have a, do about an hour show, but we've got to go and record the podcast, so we're not going to. And then you're going to Munich. And then I'm going to Munich. And you can do it all out there. Um, so let's not talk about loads and loads of these things that are on this list that has been lovingly prepared by Josh Sexton. Thanks, Josh. He's also going um, to Munich. Oh, he's also going to Munich as well, yeah. Uh, and another shout, by the way, for if you're over in Ireland or you just fancy a trip to Ireland, uh, between the 23rd and the 25th of March, we are doing three dates in Ireland. We're doing Dublin, Galway and Port Leash. Um, we're doing it in really mad order because Craig Hannon was involved. Um, but, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. I love Ireland. I uh, love Guinness. Looking forward to getting. You over normally there when we do Ireland, you normally can't come. Is this the first live show you've done in Ireland? No, I've done I've done Dublin and I've done um, Belfast, uh, but that's it. I'm really looking forward to Galway. I'm yeah. really looking forward to a pint in Galway because being, I've been to Galway, but I've not had a pint there. And I've been told off loads and loads of people that it's a great place to have yeah. a pint. So that'll be that'll be brilliant. And come down, have a laugh. We'll chat about the Reds. We'll play silly games. We'll all have a good laugh. We'll, all, we'll sing songs. We'll Liverpool, enjoy Liverpool ourselves. will be top of the league during this. We'll have a big three <laughs> days at top of the league. It'll be top of the league this, top of the league Guinness, top of the league white pudding. Uh, you white name it, good. it will be top of the league. Top, soda bread. Yep, yeah, top of the league Everton. soda bread. Uh, yeah. I hope I said Port Leash right as well because I know someone on here keeps getting right. it wrong. Me, it's me. Is it you? I say Port, Port Louise, obviously. Just <laughs> say what I say. So Port Leash, there you go. I've said it right, hopefully. And yeah, get on to today's shows because really looking forward to doing them as well. The free show will be out there as ever. It will be filmed also, so it'll be on YouTube too. Uh, review out there as well. Qualified coach and all that. Join and Neil, going through it all. And it'll be a great listen because it always is. Uh, listen, that's been Talking Reds. Nice one for that. Uh, keep on watching. And we're, we're going to Germany. And we're going to Germany to watch a boss Liverpool side. Put the Reds. It is a joy to be in Manchester with Manchester's most consummate professional, Mr. Tom Lee himself, to talk through. You're about to go on stage, aren't you? I've got your pre-stage. Are you nervous? They're, they're sending out search parties looking for this consummate professional. <laughs> I'm nervous. No, not remotely, actually. I, um, I think, you know, when you've got a room full of people and everybody's looking at you thinking, what's going to come out? And you know yourself yep. that as soon as you start talking, you've no idea what's going to come out. <laughs> it's just a sort of uncoordinated jumble of facts, stats and general rubbish that people may or may not find interesting and entertaining. Let's hope so. Uh, you've got, let's hope that they do indeed find it interesting and entertaining. I want to talk about Cheltenham. 
we went up in the northwest. We've got entry in Liverpool. Mm. Cheltenham is the feast of horse racing. It is what jump racing lives for. Cheltenham is the absolute creme de la creme, and, th- and this year is no exception. Cheltenham is the place you want to go if you are possibly kind of trying to emulate something off the front page of Country Casuals and you're walking along with a sturdy <laughs> Labrador retriever, pair of cords, maybe a nice bit of tweed on, not unlike this floral number you're bedecked in yourself. <laughs> Cheltenham's different. Cheltenham's very much summoning the, joking aside, Cheltenham appeals very much to the more of the kind of the, the country environment. The mm. cross-section in the crowd is different. Of course you get, it's a cornucopia of different tastes, styles, personalities and the, the level and depth and quality of the Anglo-Irish challenge in the horse racing is enormous. Aintree, the standard's just as high but it's more urban and it's more about fun. It being a city race course, people, as you and I have discussed before when we've done pieces, it's the place where you can go for your champagne breakfast, you can go and do your bit of shopping, you can have your couple of nights in the hotel, and then you can dive in a taxi for a couple of quid and go out to yep. Liverpool race course, and you have that. Whereas Cheltenham's a slightly different gig in the sense that it's more of a place you're going on the train, maybe you're going to have your fun in town, and then it's sort of out there and it's destination Cheltenham, Aintree, mix and match. It's a very different gig for those three days. You know how much fun it is. I think that's the word, that's the relevant word. Cheltenham's more serious. Yep. Aintree, maybe the, just that little bit of heat's gone out the sun by the time you get to Aintree and, and people it's also are ready when, to party. It's also when you're in industry, you know, you've been, you've been doing this for years. Aintree's when they let the hair down, but Cheltenham is the serious business. It's where everyone wants to prove themselves. Yes, it is, because actually at that point in the season, those horses, the gap between Cheltenham and Aintree is absolutely pivotal because they have to actually, imagine if you were a footballer, you need a rest day in between. Yep. You can't just go, 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 go. You have to be let down to be brought back up to a peak. So if you say that the, the two twin peaks of the national hunt racing season over the sticks, Cheltenham and Aintree, they're both absolutely vital. But the first challenge that everybody's gunning for as you're coming through the winter is as early as August, September, October, the bookies are saying, that horse that won there, we're giving him a quote for the Arkle. We're giving him a quote for the Gold Cup, whatever it might be. Well, I was in Nice uh, a few weeks back, uh, end of January. I know, and I got the text. Oh, you got the text and you gave me the tips and we did all right. There is, uh, maybe we'll find out if we'll do all right again in a minute. There is, what struck me at Nice was all everyone was talking about was Cheltenham. Is this horse for Cheltenham? Is that horse for Cheltenham? The punters were talking about Cheltenham. See, the commentators were talking about Cheltenham. Cheltenham, Cheltenham, Cheltenham. Neil, I think there's something very special about Liverpool. That when I'm in Liverpool, I feel like I've got the close, closest connection to being in Ireland that I possibly can while still being in England. Yeah. And I always think that the Scousers, just, that there's something about the, the psyche of the people that channels into that punter horse racing mentality. I think horse racing celebrated arguably more in Liverpool than in any other city, including where we are tonight. And then when you get to Ireland, up the ante times 10. Oh, it's unreal. Because it's an obsession. It's a, it's a word that I refuse to use in, in connection with football, but one I think is apt in the context of horse racing. It's a passion. Yep. And people over there live and breathe horse racing. Everyone's got an opinion. You can walk down the street, if you're connected to it, if you're a trainer, if you're a jockey, if you're an owner, if you're a pundit, you can be in a situation, you can be walking. I was the other day, I was in a little village called Dunboyne. There's a crossroads there, a fella on a massive blue tractor at the light, door opens, what's the good one for tomorrow? I mean, (laughs) how cool is that? How amazing is that, that a guy who's kind of towing a big trailer of barley or whatever he's up to, (laughs) actually he's, the first thing on his mind is not what's he going to have for tea tonight or not not what's he going to buy his missus for his birthday there's your man get a tip get, get a tip for tomorrow so I'll ask you, ask you for a tip for the festival Champions Day first and foremost the Tuesday what do you like? Right race two the Arkle Novices Chase horse I've been watching this winter uh, he can do it over a variety of distances indeed he's done it over two miles two and a half and three miles but he's got speed to burn uh, trained by the ex-footballer Mick Channon is Glenn Forcer, okay. who's a horse who actually, as some of the big campaigners drop away, few injuries, niggles, setbacks, whatever it might be, the horse who's getting closer and closer to the front of the betting, won't necessarily be favorite, but he'll probably be in the first three in the betting, this Glenn Forcer, who there's no doubt about him staying, versatile as regards ground, and the way he beat Kalashnikov at Sandown the last day hinted at a horse who actually has got way more to give than anyone quite cottoned onto. And maybe Cheltenham in the Arkle on day one is the day that everyone just goes, oh, respect. OK, uh, Wednesday, Ladies' Day, what do you want for that? Wednesday, fast forward. Uh, I don't want to give you something that I wouldn't put a pound on myself. More so than fair. I'm going to speed straight on into Thursday. The big race on Thursday, the championship race, is the Stayers Hurdle. That's a race that everyone's talking about, the likes of Paisley Park. 
rightly so. He's been stunning, a revelation this season. Many people are talking about Penn Hill, mm -hmm. the horse who's got this most unconventional preparation. He doesn't run all season. He turns up in Cheltenham and he wins. <laughs> he did it in 17, he did it in 18. But part of it is he's trained by Willie Mullins, who's the master. So when you throw that into the equation, it's not quite as untoward as it otherwise might be. So you look at those guys, you look at the possibility that maybe Sam Crow, who was a big champion this time last year, yep. he's had a shambles of a season. And yet, hidden underneath the chaos and the debris of his season, is still a great, fine, quality racehorse. And then in amongst all of that, when you're looking round and you're thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, is there a bit of each way value? Is there something at a price that we've missed that's that maybe just sifting through the haystack? And I'm looking at a horse called Kilbrick and Storm. Okay. This is the same Kilbrick and Storm who absolutely shocked people with his performance at the festival last year, after which he went jumping fences. That doesn't work for him. Whatever it is about that heady mixture of going over the bigger obstacles, no thanks. But back over hurdles, they say that he's catching pigeons on the gallops. And this Kilbrick and Storm is a horse who, a bit like I was saying about Sam Crow, one swallow doesn't make a summer. And with him, right now, as, as I talk to you, I know it's a couple of, couple of weeks away and the price can change and things can happen yeah. and variables and factors, whatever. Right now, he's 20 or 16 to 1, depending on where you shop around. That's great value about a horse of his quality, about whom his trainer, Colin Tizard, is abs he's practically frothing at the mouth with <laughs> excitement. He's saying, everybody, you've got to believe me. Don't write him off. He could well surprise you. I think he might. OK, and the Friday, the big day itself, what, what, what do you like the look of? There's two words in the English language that I love almost more than any other right now at this, at this time of the year. Well, for that matter, most of the year. Presenting Percy. He's the favourite <laughs> for the Gold Cup. That's the big race, not just of Friday, but of the entire meeting. Yep. He's trained in Ireland by a genius. The backstory to this trainer, Pat Kelly, is Oscar worthy. 20 years ago, more than 25 years ago, out of nowhere as a young, obscure trainer, twice in three years he won the Galway Hurdle. He then vanished for two decades. He reappeared three years ago and won the Per Temps Handicap Hurdle, maybe the hardest of the handicaps to win. Twelve months later, he returned with Presenting Percy and again won the Per Temps. Twelve months ago, so going for a third consecutive year winning at the festival, people who've spent millions trying to get Cheltenham winners couldn't get one in three decades. This guy turns up, three years on the bounce, Per Temps, Per Temps, last year with Presenting Percy, RSA. The excitement around that horse this year has been monumental in horse racing terms. How many times has he run over fences? None at all. <laughs> How many times has he bought him out of his stable and shown him to the public once, where he won with his ears pricked, waving for the speed cameras and, and literally lighting a cigar going by the line in Gorham Park? And now all of a sudden, people just love to knock and doubt and, and criticise and say, it's too good to be true. It's not. It's not too good to be true. The foolish fans bet odds compilers tonight are putting an offer on for him, which I think he's going to say five to one just for a couple of hours on the preview night. But come the day, doesn't matter who your bookmaker is and, or if you're into that kind of thing, but if you're walking down the high street, if you're on the app and you're playing with whatever, ours is fans bet, ours is reds bet, or if you're going into your local whatever, Labrooks, whoever, doesn't matter, you're going to see this name again and again and again. You're going to see presenting Percy. The odds are going to drift because people just can't believe that this yeah. heady mix of a trainer who doesn't speak to the press, a horse who's barely set hoof on a race course, and the credibility of this form against the powerhouse operations, against the likes of Mike Bite, against the likes of Native River, against these real giants of the turf, these established heavyweight names that everybody knows about. And yet here's this cheeky upstart from the west of Ireland <laughs> who has been to Cheltenham twice, he's won twice, he then stays silent, runs him <laughs> once all season, and here he is, a slightly vulnerable, but nonetheless, to my eyes, very attractive favourite for the Gold Cup, presenting Percy. Presenting Percy, presenting Percy presents us not just with the end of this little chat that I'm having here with Tom, but it presents us with a story that I'm going to take, I'm going to pitch, and I'm going to walk around Hollywood with in my back pocket <laughs> of Tom's say so. We're here, we're in Manchester, we're having a fabulous night, it's been terrific so far, and we are here for Fans Bet, for Reds Bet, and for the Cheltenham Festival. Whatever you're doing, enjoy it. Thank you.